Hey guys, let's talk about Dither. I want to once and for all kind of give a clear explanation so that you can see here what Dither is doing. Why do we Dither, how it works, and what effect it has on our audio. So I'm going to start out with a tone. All right, we've got 440 hertz tone. And this is generated in 64-bit audio, so there is no noise floor. Now let's talk about what happens when we truncate that or when we reduce the bit depth of our samples. What happens is it raises our noise floor. So let me bring in this handy little plugin called Pixelator. Uh, let's turn it on. You can see right when I turn it on, I set this to 24 bits. We already saw the noise floor kind of hop up a bit, but it's super low. As we reduce the bit depth, we can see that noise floor rise. It's coming up. The lower we get, the higher that noise floor. You can really start to hear it come in. All right, so I'm going to bring this way down to like 1.8. Right, so here's what it looks like. Here's what our sine wave now looks like. It's a stair-steppy, ugly thing. Uh, and here's what it sounds like. Okay, so what we're gonna do now, let's mute that for a second, because it sounds terrible. I'm going to add some noise. Here's what the noise sounds like. This is white noise generated. Here's the noise we're gonna be working with, okay? You can see here's just random white noise. Okay, let's turn on our tone again. Now, this is without truncating, this is bypass. Let's turn up the noise. Okay, and it sounds like that. Now, what happens when we have this on and we turn up the noise? This is where things get kind of cool. You can see that the, the harmonics, the distortion got squished down into the noise. Remember, this is noise off. This is noise on. It's not just masking that noise, it's actually squishing it down and spreading it out. Now, that's one thing that Dither does. So again, we're just adding noise to our signal before we bring it down to 1.8 bits or whatever. But there's another kind of cool thing it does. Let's turn off the noise. So as we turn down our noise, it, get, it stops. Oh, like we can't even play sound below 11 dB because it's just getting truncated off. What happens when we add noise to it? Okay, so again, we get rid of all those harmonics, but watch this. As we go down, maybe cross 11 dB, we can still hear it. I'm down negative, I mean, you can kind of hear that. It's still there. It's faint, and it's pretty buried by the noise, but it's still there. But look, we've changed our, basically, what we can represent from negative 11 to negative, we've added 20 dB of dynamic range, essentially. Just by adding noise. I mean, that's all there is to it. You add noise, and you increase your dynamic range. It's a simple thing. Now, a lot of people ask, well, what about noise shaping? Let me just bring in a really kind of, again, dumb example of what noise shaping does. What we're going to do is we're going to just EQ our noise floor so that it, it is boosted way up in the high frequencies, and it kind of attenuates down here in the, in the mid frequencies where we're more sensitive. Okay, so you can hear the difference between on and off. No, noise shaping, no noise shaping. And what's going on there is basically we're just focusing all this noise up here in the high end. And it makes it sound less loud. No noise shaping, noise shaping. And it has the same effect, look, as we bring down our tone. Okay, same idea, but, you know, at negative 28 versus... It 
So the idea is, as we noise shape our signal, we can further reduce the noise level of the dither noise. So dithering increases your dynamic range when you're down uh, converting the bit depth. That's all there is to it. Let's go do other stuff now.